Jill, what do you think is behind this idea that we want people to die without pain? I, I'm not sure. I, I don't think there is any way really for people to die without pain when you're causing them to die. And uh, I, I think that that's just people's, you know, wish to take a step back and not be responsible for the, you know, gruesome killing of another individual. I, I think it's mostly probably just a psychological thing. I'm not really sure. I, I don't think it's it's true though that that we are have ever probably put anyone to death without them feeling uh, a great deal of pain. Uh, so I'm I'm not really sure where that comes from. And it's interesting because there is a minority vo voice. Every once in a while, you're certainly going to come across someone who says, "I think they should suffer. I think the the convicted murderers should suffer as they go." But that is a very minority voice. Mm -hmm. I think the average American, even those who are in support of the death penalty, want to struggle with a way to administer judicial retribution without necessarily harming and hurting that person. But medical science hasn't developed a way to humanely kill someone, and it's such an oxymoron if you're going to kill them, but to be concerned about whether or not it's painful, it really just challenges people to take that extra step and say, you don't want to cause the individual pain, you shouldn't want to end their life either. Well, just in case you tuned in, we're about halfway through. This is The Watchful Citizen, brought to you by the Lancaster County Democrats. And we have our holiday special uh, today <laughs> talking about the death penalty. And so I hope that maybe uh, some of the aspects of our conversation sort of strike you, and maybe you'll take action. Um, the website for Nebraskans Against the Death Penalty? www.nadp.net. That stands for Nebraskans Against the Death Penalty, nadp.net. I want to kind of switch gears a little bit. We've been talking about sort of the grisly reality of what it's like um, killing people uh, when the state does that through the death penalty and other, other things regarding the actual grisly reality of, of life and death. But I want to, what are you, Nebraskans Against Death Penalty, I was reading uh, some of your brochures and I saw that this is the time, the time is now, and that there's a campaign that's going to kick off here literally weeks from the time that people see this uh, TV show with the legislative session. Can you tell me a little bit about the campaign? I don't know if Amy wants to start and then maybe Jill can uh, continue. What's going on? Well, I'll certainly speak to an event we've got coming up um, in the near future and then I think Jill especially has been very active on the ground floor about some of the events that have been happening around the state and the education efforts that you're seeing rise up from all sorts of grassroots activists. In the past, Nebraskans Against the Death Penalty has had a legislative lobbying day um, a day a teach-in where we've brought uh, people who want to abolish the death penalty to the state capitol to listen and learn more information about the death penalty since all of us are on an education quest all the time and then move out and talk to their state senators and express them personally while they're against the death penalty. But in the past that always has been you know members of Nebraskans Against the Death Penalty sort of trying to reiterate why we're excited about this issue and why we are so impassioned as a social justice cause. This year we're trying to take a different attitude. We're, we are bringing people who are those more unusual voices, the unique voices that we don't hear enough in the movement to abolish the death penalty. This includes victims' families. If you have a loved one who has been killed by someone, um, there's this sort of common perception that you must want revenge. You must want the murder of your loved one to pay the ultimate price and be executed. That's just not so. So many victims' families discover that that gives them the false sense of there's going to be closure and that it's not there, and yet we don't have a chance to listen to those voices very often. We all seem like we're acting for them, but we're not. So we're hoping to have um, one of the many women who has been working um, in this state to talk about her experience after she had a family member murdered, and the murder of her um, sibling is on death row now. We hope to have a member of law enforcement who has uh, worked for years, decades, with criminals, worked with repeat offenders, knows just how bad people can be, and yet still sees why there should not be a death penalty. And we hope to have that voice, too, of someone who has changed their mind about the death penalty. We have an individual, and you'll notice I'm not naming names because we're still in the process of confirming. We have an individual who was very pro-death penalty and had um, responsibility for helping make laws that would enforce the death penalty, but kept his mind open and realized as he went along in life this was not justice. So this is an event that we will be featuring these voices, invite state senators to come and any member of the community who wants to come to. It will be Monday, January 7th at the State Capitol, starting at 10 a.m. And again, it's open to the public if people want to come. The real idea is here, you don't need to know what Jill and Amy think about the death penalty. Um, 
people who are really involved in it, the lawmakers, the law enforcement, the victim's family, those are people we need to hear from. And they are powerful stories about why we need to change the current way we're administering justice in this state. So again, that's Monday, January 7th at 10 a.m. And Jill, what's going on at the grassroots level? Uh, well, I think we've seen a, a kind of a groundswell of, of activity going on all across the state, uh, which is a great thing to see because oftentimes, you know, with political issues in Nebraska, it seems like Lincoln and Omaha uh, is where you do stuff and uh, the rest of the state feels like they've been forgotten and oftentimes it turns out maybe they have. Uh, but right now, some of the, the biggest activities we have going on are in North Platte. Uh, we have a, a very active group out there uh, that is meeting regularly, talking about these issues. Uh, they even met with the Lincoln County Democratic uh, Organization there and had a big discussion about the death penalty. Uh, so there's great things going on in other parts of the state. Uh, also in Lincoln and Omaha, uh, we're starting to get uh, the, you know, the basic uh, network put together that will be very active during the legislative session. Uh, we, we are really trying to encourage people to take that very initial step uh, of contacting your representative uh, and either saying thank you for their support of abolition because it, it may not have been the easiest decision that they ever made uh, when they voted for the bill last year. Uh, so thanking those people who, who have supported us and asking them to do it again and also writing to those who were not supporting us and, and asking them to do so. Uh, just taking that first step is very important to getting involved in this. Uh, and then beyond that, uh, helping to get other people uh, involved also, really to make that, that network uh, available so that when the time comes, uh, we have enough people calling their legislators, contacting them, uh, that we really create uh, you know, the groundswell, like I said, of, of activity that's gonna be needed to do this. Uh, hopefully we'll be helped out by New Jersey, uh, who looks like on Monday and Thursday, they will most likely be voting to end the death penalty. Uh, so if we could pick that up here uh, and keep the ball rolling, uh, I really think we have a chance to, to set the tone for the entire country. Uh, if, if Nebraska decides that they are in fact against the death penalty, uh, that will speak very well uh, for, the, for the rest of the states that are working on this issue. And it has been so fascinating to watch this grassroots movement because it is something that anyone can do, right? You don't have to be a registered lobbyist, you don't have to be an expert in this field. Uh, some people are having house parties where they invite friends over. They might watch a film or a documentary if they want to. I mean, the film Dead Man Walking starring Susan Sarandon and Sean Penn is an incredibly powerful moving, just almost like a documentary. Some people are having house parties and then afterwards everybody sits down and just drops a, a note card to their senator telling them what they think. If there are uh, church groups or civic groups, if your Rotary Club wants to have someone come and talk about the death penalty, we're not going to be bombastic and try to change people's minds. We're just going to present why we are against the death penalty. And we welcome anyone giving us that opportunity to sort of share those viewpoints. So anyone who watches this, uh, this broadcast is welcome to contact Nebraskans Against the Death Penalty and say, can you help me host an event? Or can you come speak to my faith group? Can you come to my classroom? and we'd be happy to come and share our viewpoint. And the website again is www.nadp.net.